So some of you have been asking on your course reflection sheets, why do I really have to know this stuff? And so I have thought, you know, that's a valid question because I remember learning stuff, especially in math class. And I said to myself, when am I ever really going to need to know this? And yeah, I actually did use the Pythagorean theorem when my dad had to build rafters in the barn. But other than that, I really didn't have to use the Pythagorean theorem ever. And so I get that you're probably wondering why you might have to know stuff. And here's the thing. I've come up with a whole list of reasons why. And this is the stuff that you look at. You know, we're not talking about balancing a checkbook, a checkbook here. We're talking about stuff like that you've just recently had to do in earth science where you had to answer questions about the brightness of stars and, you know, whether Aldebaran is brighter than Pollux and wondering when are you ever going to need to know that? Valid question. So here's my list of reasons why you need to know that stuff. And I think what I consider to be the number one reason is going to surprise you. Are you ready? The content that you're learning, you probably really don't need to know again, at least in earth science. There's a really good chance that the actual stuff that you're learning about, that you're sitting there saying, when am I going to need to know it? You won't. That's not the point. It's not about the content. It's about making your brain stronger so that it can function better at higher level thinking. It's basically improving your brain, making it smarter. You remember how we talked in class about the only way that you can build muscle is by actually making them work harder, which is why when you make them work harder, they tend to tear and they actually get better when they, when they regenerate after being torn. That's why we call guys who are really, really um, muscular ripped because they've literally ripped their muscle fibers. Well, your brain works similarly in that the only way that you can strengthen it is to work it harder. If all you ever did was the easy stuff, your brain wouldn't get better at problem solving. And you can sit there and say, well, okay, but if I ever need to know the, if I don't ever need to know the Pythagorean theorem, then why do I need a stronger brain? Well, because life in general has problems. Everything that you do as an adult, especially, is going to be problem solving. And you might not necessarily be a problem, but you're going to have to use those higher level thinking skills in order to figure stuff out, like which job you should take, which major you should have in college, what play you should do in a game that you're in and think fast and be able to analyze the situation. Um, how to manage your finances. Uh, relationships are huge problem solving opportunities all the time. Should you be in one? Should you not be in one? How do you, how do you address this situation? How about your boss? What about at work? There's so much problem solving in life and it doesn't matter whether those problems have to do with stars or anything else if you can strengthen your brain cells by using them on the harder things then it's going to just make you smarter and better able to do that and yeah so the chart that you were just recently using in science where you had to you had to you had to determine that the boxes were not all the same for the temperature of the stars. That means it's not a graph. The fact that the side for luminosity was um, exponential, then and then you also had to see that temperature was related to the color of the stars and how all of the stars were categorized based on similarities and differences, and that's how we classify them. When you answer questions about those and you have to take that information and analyze it on a chart, it makes your brain work harder and makes you think. So will you ever really need to know whether Aldebaran is brighter than Pollux? No. But the skills that you are learning when you're using that chart to answer those questions, you will need to know later on. And to me, that's the number one reason why you need to know this stuff. But just in case you think that's lame, I have more. Reason number two. Um, when you learn about anything, doesn't matter what the subject is, it makes you more knowledgeable and therefore a more informed citizen. Because 
Taxpaying citizens are the people who decide what happens in our country. And they do that literally by going into a voting bo booth and choosing certain referendums, certain budget line items. They decide who's going to lead our country. And they don't want to they don't want to pick that arbitrarily. They want good reasons for picking those people and for voting that way. And the only way that you can that you can make a good decision is if you are informed about stuff. So you know, I mean, you want people that are knowledgeable and have lots of information to make those decisions, and that includes you. So, for instance, maybe, yeah, you don't need to know whether Aldebaran is brighter than Pollux, but because you know about stars and because you now know how they make their energy and you know that's not an easy process and we can't duplicate it very well on Earth, then that's why you know why trillions of dollars are being spent to build something like a Hadron Collider miles below the Earth's surface because the amount of energy that is generated in that process, maybe if we could harness it, it would solve a lot of our energy needs. Therefore, when there are things that come up about where to spend money, and if we should spend money on something like that, you have an informed decision there. You have information in order to base your decision on. And that's a good thing. And while we're on the subject of making you more knowledgeable so that you can make good decisions, it just makes you a more interesting person. I mean... Not necessarily better in the sense that you'd be more superior than people who don't know so much. It's not a superiority thing. It's just somebody that people want to hang out with. I mean, who wants to spend time with somebody who has no opinions because they don't know anything? Or their opinions are false because they don't have the right information or enough information to base those opinions on. You can't even have a conversation with them because they don't even know what questions to ask you. So you don't want to hang out with those people. You want to be a more interesting person, somebody that people want to have conversations with, somebody that people like having conversations with, just somebody that you can, you know, that other people gravitate towards. And, you know, it just makes you more interesting. And the more things you know, the more experiences that you are, that, that you might be able to take part in, the more people, the more places. That just makes you more well-rounded, and that's a healthy, good thing. And think about the conversations that you've already had at your dinner table with your family since you started Earth Science. Aren't you already talking about all the really cool things with your family? Imagine if you were talking about those really cool things with strangers that you meet, or on a date, not that you should be dating when you're 14, but just imagine you have interesting things to talk about because you're learning new things about interesting topics, not just the things that you already know about. So that's reason number three. Reason number four is personal to me because you need to know about things in order to make decisions about, for instance, what you want to do with the rest of your life, like college and stuff. I didn't have earth science in high school. It wasn't an option. My high school didn't offer it. So when I went to college, I planned on being a biology teacher. And then I had to fill my very first semester of my first semester schedule with something and an earth science entry level course was being offered. I said, oh, that sounds interesting. I've never learned about that stuff before. I took it, was blown away by the content, absolutely loved it, found out that there actually was a New York State Regents program in this subject and that I could get certified in it. And within a week, I was over at the registrar's office and I changed my major to earth science education. And I'm and and then as if that wasn't enough, my senior year, I'm actually getting ready to graduate. I had to fill another schedule with some humanities classes. I took a class in anthropology, something I'd never heard of, had no idea what it was, absolutely fell in love with it, and a month after classes started, went back to the registrar's office and picked up a dual major so that I could get a degree in both earth science education and anthropology. And I've never regretted that. I've taught college anthropology. I think it makes me a better earth science teacher. And I I wouldn't even know about those two topics. Like I could have I could have saved a lot of money and a lot of time had I known about anthropology beforehand and earth science beforehand. So, it might not be something that you ever even knew about. Maybe you didn't really think stars were very interesting. You just thought they were little pinpoint of light in the sky. But now maybe you became interested in them and maybe you're actually interested in being an astrophysicist. Maybe you're the next Stephen Hawking. And maybe you just want to get a telescope because you think it would be fun to look at them and now you know how and how to do that. It doesn't even have to be a lifelong choice. It could just be something that you enjoy. And on that same note, it's not really about you, just, just you anyway. Even if you don't find it interesting, the person next to you might. And 
you know, the next unit that we do, maybe they will think is the most boring in the whole wide world, but it's your favorite. So just be open-minded to be learning about these new things because that might be where you want to pursue a hobby or a career or whatever, or even nothing, but at least you know. At least you know. And then there's the last reason. And this is an important one. Are you ready? Knowledge is power. I'm going to say that again because it's really important. Knowledge is power. And when I say power, I do not mean power over the people that are less knowledgeable than you. No. I mean knowledge gives you power over your life and the decisions in it. Because how can you make good decisions without knowledge? You have to have information. Here's the thing. Let's say you only know a tiny little bit of stuff. Because you never really paid attention, you never finished school, or you just didn't care. You only know a little tiny bit of stuff. You also only have a few skills. You don't have a lot of job opportunities available to you because you don't have the knowledge and the skills required to do a whole bunch of different jobs. So that means you get restricted to very few opportunities. You might have to work a menial job, a labor job. You might have to work a job that pays only minimum wage because that's all you're trained for. That's all the knowledge you have. That's all you can do. But if you know more, if you have more skills, if your knowledge base is deeper and broader, then you are literally going to open so many more doors and have so many more choices in front of you. And notice not once have I said more education. It doesn't even necessarily have to be more degrees in college. You can read about stuff. Yes, I said it. You can read about stuff. You don't have to have a formal education. You can just learn stuff. And the more skills that you have, the more knowledge you have, and yeah, those degrees do help, the more doors will be open so that you can make choices. And you can say, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Where if you don't know that much stuff, you've only got a couple of doors in front of you. Now, could you still get that minimum wage paying, menial, high intensity labor job? Absolutely. But the difference is, it's because you want to, not because it's the only one that's open to you. That's the thing. So knowledge gives you power to make choices that will govern your life. And you can't ask for much more than that. So really, that's kind of why you need to know this stuff. You're welcome. <laughs>